Hi, welcome to Bart Sharp Limited Airbrushing. A few people have asked for a quick video uh, to detail the basic setup of airbrushes and to describe what's going on. Um, this is the basic airbrush that we sell. It's the Vader 130. It's a dual action airbrush and what that actually means is that you've got a push down action which will release the air and only the air and then when you pull back that's where you get your paint release so that is the dual action push down pull back on this particular model um, just to give an overview what, what we've got here is, is a gravity feed because the paint is in the top cup and it simply is pushed down or pulled through by gravity I'll go through the, the basic setup your airline goes on to the bottom here this is described generally as a 1 8 fitting uh, with respect to the Vader airbrushes you can also get one quarter and there are connectors and adapters which will help reduce and um, get your correct connection the air comes in and it will travel along the airbrush along here and to this point at the end there it's only when um, you start to pull back on the trigger that you'll get the release of the paint and the way that that happens is that the paint is held in this section and then the needle which is traveling or goes the length of the airbrush I'll show you in a second is then pulled back from a nozzle so I'm just going to show you that but uh, just to get the needle tip which is really fine and quite delicate out of the way I'm going to press that well I'm just going to pull that back and then we'll undo this very end section here There we go. Basically what we've got there is the nozzle. Um, that nozzle really has a very fine hole in it and if I just release the needle you can see it coming back through again. So it's the pulling back of that needle which opens the aperture in the nozzle which allows the paint out. What, it, what actually happens then is that um, the air having travelled along here and up through here is mixed in this section and that's where the atomization happens and the paint in the air is mixed together and then you have two further sections here this section that's referred to as the the nozzle cap and then the end section that's referred to as the needle cap the needle cap really just does what it says it just it just protects the uh, the end of the the needle from uh, any damage or knocks whilst in use. The nozzle cap, you see, it's just got a hole through the centre there. And the paint gets atomised within this section and sent out through that uh, aperture there. Let's just pull that needle back and out of the way. Put that back on. So a lot of the airbrushes come with various size needles, uh, nozzles, nozzle caps, and generally speaking, they're 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5 millimeter. The needle cap um, is a one size fits all, really. So uh, don't worry too much about that. Let's go to the uh, the back section, and this is where the tail end of the needle is housed. And we just really see that it, it's quite simple in setup. Pull back, and you have the needle chucking guide. Just pulls back, and that's what creates the aperture for the paint to come through the nozzle. To remove the needle, you just undo the, uh, the locking nut. and then slowly slide slide the needle out so you see that that needle has got a really really fine tip and it's important to keep that uh, protected at all times and to be very delicate with it if um, during cleaning you've got a breakdown of the airbrush just wipe from back to the front there so you'll protect 
that very fine point because it's at that point that the paint and the air mix comes off um, any damage to that and it will affect the spray pattern so we'll just put that back in it's just a case of sliding it home quite gently and you'll feel a bit of resistance and that's because there's a, a packing nut, uh, a Teflon washer that um, stops the paint travelling back this way uh, along the airbrush um, to prevent spillages and so forth. Um, as I mentioned earlier some models actually have um, an adjusting screw I keep screwing but obviously the further that comes out the further that will allow the needle to travel backwards so it's just a, a means of adding a stopping facility so that you can actually dictate the amount of paint that is sent out just squeeze that back on A um, common mistake that a lot of people make when they use these airbrushes is that they think they have to put 20 newtons of pressure on every uh, every twist. You don't. It's generally just finger tight. There's nothing to do with air pressure down this end. Um, that well, Most fittings on airbrushes now have got a little o-ring on them. And uh, once that's done up snug, that'll, prefer, uh, that'll offer the airtight finish or seal. People over tightening it will just damage or split that o-ring so it's generally just finger tight and, and similarly with the, the nozzle as well. I'll just show you where that is. There we go, just there. The small nozzle. Now most airbrushes they actually come with a little tool as well. Just like that. Um, what I generally do though is, let's just pull that needle back and out of the way again. In fact it's not quite tight so it's not pulling it back. That's better. Okay, just for speed, I generally just do it with my fingers anyway. Just get a tight grip on it and it, it, you can see that that's just slowly undoing. The most you want to do is, is one eighth or a quarter turn further past that with the spanner. Um, you don't need it over tight, you will break in effect what is a small delicate o-ring seal that's just there. Finger tight only. Okay so that's that airbrush really explained. So that is your dual action gravity feed airbrush um, that has various size needles, nozzles and nozzle caps available. You have got um, another style which is this one here and this is referred to as a side feed siphon. Many airbrush users who uh, do model uh, aircraft and, and the like use this as a standalone airbrush for applying their top coat and their lacquer. But really as siphon states, um, it really just sucks the paint up from this jar here and sends it up through the uh, the arm here and it's exactly the same principle as it as it comes out uh, the needle nozzle nozzle cap there. Again dual action. So that's a 134 on the Vader model. Um, just moving up a little bit more you've got the Vader 186 um, again Dual action, press down for air, pull back for paint. This has actually got a micro air control just here and that really allows for quite fine detailed artwork um, and it has the adjuster on the back as well. So really that, that's it. Um, dual action, stoppers at the back and very easy to change the needles, the nozzles, the nozzle caps. Um, and so on. The, the key word really is just to be sort of uh, delicate with it. Uh, the the O-rings are something that uh, could get damaged uh, but uh, spares are available. So I'm hoping that that, that actually uh, helps with the general description of what an airbrush is and how it works.
Okay, this is the airbrush compressor kit. This is the TC80T. Um, the T at the end just stands for tank. Um, this is a 3 litre tank. Generally they're around about that size. Um, just starting at the top you'll see that you've got the compressor head just here. And that's a single cylinder and it's oilless. Um, you've got a pressure sensor here which allows for an auto start and an auto stop. On this particular model um, it's an auto start at 3 bar and an auto stop at 4 bar. Got the on off switch here. It's the, the fan area or the area where the electrics are, um, are housed. The next item you see is this red um, pressure release valve here. It's got a little circuit clip on the top and if you actually pull it it will just release the air. That's um, a safety feature so if the Compressor keeps pumping in excess, I believe, of uh, 6 to 8 bar. It will automatically let the air out of there. Also on the bottom and the underside, you'll just see a brass washer. That actually screws. And what that allows is for the tank to be drained. Um, during the course of uh, compressing air, byproduct of that is going to be uh, water vapour. So it's a good idea to every now and again to to drain that. It's also a good idea to actually uh, expel all the air if you're storing the unit for any length of time. So um, just working down then, compressor, compressor head there, single cylinder and it compresses it, pushes it down via a, a pipe at this end into the tank and then it comes out via this uh, connector here. Um, this is called uh, a manometer. It's basically a water trap but it's also got a dial on it and that allows the user to preset, predetermine the air pressure that is coming out to the airbrush. A lot of people actually struggle with this bit of kit so um, I will go through that in a little bit more detail because once you've learnt it, it's very simple and should not cause any further problems at all. Okay, this is with a view down onto the pressure regulator, the manometer, the water trap. You can see we've got the, uh, the dial here, and if I just zoom in, just be able to make out a minus and a plus. So that would clearly indicate that if we turn it in the direction of the minus, we're going to release the pressure at the airbrush, turn it clockwise and we will increase the pressure of the airbrush. Now the problem that most people um, find at the first stage is that they fail to lift the collar. You've literally got to lift that black dial and reset it to actually set your pressure as well. Otherwise you'll just you'll be spinning and it, it, it won't adjust it in any respect whatsoever. So what we've got here is the dial now. You can see that that is just on about 3 bar, just over 40 psi. Um, what I'm going to do is get the airbrush and I'm going to press the trigger and we'll slowly see that, that dial comes down and the unit's now kicked in and it's kicked in because it's, it's saying OK I want to maintain that 40 psi but I don't want that much, uh, I probably want to work around about 15 to 20 psi so I'm going to lift this dial and I'm going to turn it anti-clockwise you may just be able to, as I do that, see the pressure will start to drop there. Just there we go. We'll let the unit get back up to pressure and cut off. Just wait for that to um, stop climbing. Okay, so we can see now that the unit is well, it's just under 40 psi. So I'm going to lift the dial again and I'm going to just twist it and you can just see I'll try and do that with the other hand to get it out of the way okay you can see that the pressure is dropping now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it down to around about um, 20 psi, keep it around about there put the collar back down get the airbrush again, I'm just going to press the trigger okay so that's dropped off now uh, that's way below, uh, much too low. So I'm going to lift the collar again and just turn it back up. I'll, I'll do it at two bar just so that we can easily see that. 
OK, we're just on the two bars, so what I'm going to do is press the trigger again on the airbrush and it's dropped just below the two bars, so I'm just going to tighten it clockwise turn again right, now that's dropping and hitting two two bar dead on so if I wanted to set it um, let's say at one bar let's just turn the unit around so you can get a better view So I'm going to turn the black dial anti-clockwise until that dial drops. There we go. Press the trigger, it'll drop off again I should imagine. There we go, too much. So I need to now clockwise tighten it. It's going back up towards one. Just above it. There we go. And now it's hitting just above one. Every time I press the trigger, it's dropping down to one bar and it's staying there constant. Let's say I want to increase it to two bar. Again, lift the collar, black dial, and then I'm going to turn it clockwise and see how the pressure gauge is going up. Just up to two bar, press the trigger, drops down just below. So I want to tighten that up just a little bit clockwise, increase the pressure bit too much, drops it down. So that was just a fractional turn in the anti-clockwise direction. You can see it's just above two bar at the moment and that's just hitting dead on two. The angle's a little bit different for you but uh, from my view that's dead on two. So really that's uh, the pressure set and what I'm going to do now is just zoom out and I'm going to drop that collar down. That's it. And that's how you set the pressure on your airbrush. I hope that helps.